Euthanasia and assisted suicide are two processes designed to end the suffering of those in chronic pain by ending their life or helping them to do so. In this video I will provide you with a definition of both euthanasia and assisted suicide, showing you how they are similar and how they are different. The biggest difference between euthanasia and assisted suicide concerns who takes the life of the person. With euthanasia, the person's death is caused by somebody else. Whereas with assisted suicide, they are given all the necessary help to kill themselves, but the final act is taken by them alone. However, these definitions can be misleading as they imply a world of difference between euthanasia and assisted suicide. By better understanding euthanasia, we can see that they are actually very similar. Euthanasia is a process that has two distinct forms, the active and the passive form. Active euthanasia is when death is caused by an act, for example giving somebody an overdose of painkillers. Passive euthanasia on the other hand refers to the omission of something, for example turning off somebody's life support or denying somebody an operation that would extend their life. This form of euthanasia is legal in many more countries than active euthanasia because it is often seen as letting somebody die naturally, as opposed to actively bringing about their death. So what do these two forms of euthanasia tell us about assisted suicide? I would argue that they show us that assisted suicide is more a form of euthanasia than a different process entirely. Why? Because for the person to be assisted in taking their own life, they have to be helped towards this goal. An example of this is Dignitas, a Swiss organisation that provides assisted suicide through a drink that contains an overdose of anaesthetic. The provision of this drink by somebody else cannot register as passive euthanasia, because by giving it to somebody, you are not letting them die naturally. You are actively helping them to kill themselves. However, it is neither active euthanasia, because under that scenario, the person would be administered the drink. With assisted suicide, they drink it themselves. Thus, I would argue that assisted suicide is a different form of euthanasia, which contradicts the idea that euthanasia can be purely condensed into the active and passive forms. The fact that in many countries where assisted suicide is legal, such as Belgium and Switzerland, it is referred to as voluntary euthanasia, only helps to prove my point. The fact that assisted suicide and euthanasia are thus closely related underlines the importance of knowing their separate definitions. The death of Noah Pothoven is a good example of where definitions are really important. She was a 17-year-old Dutch girl who took her own life by refusing to eat or drink. Yet Pothoven's suicide was falsely referred to as euthanasia in many news outlets. Thus, we can see why these definitions are important, because if we get them wrong, we can end up conferring guilt onto people that are not actually responsible for the acts we suppose they are. So to conclude, euthanasia is when somebody's death is brought about by somebody other than themselves, either through an act, known as active euthanasia, or through withholding something that would extend their life, for example, food or life support, known as passive euthanasia. Assisted suicide is a form of euthanasia where somebody's helped to kill themselves maybe through provision of lethal drugs, but the final act is undertaken by the person themselves. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.